Hello, and welcome to the bonus episode of The Incubator, the Biology Jobology podcast. I'm Will Old, your host, and today we have a mini interview with the winner of the Protein Tech Best Postdoc Mentor Award, Josh Morgan at the University of Delaware, and today he will be discussing mentorship. Josh, would you mind going into your research background? Um, yeah, so my research career has actually been um, pretty diverse. Uh, my degree, both my bachelor's and my PhD, is actually in uh, aeronautical engineering. Um, but then I started focusing at the tail end of my PhD. And then in uh, the first postdoc I did, I started focusing more on uh, biomedical engineering and as kind of a subject matter. Uh, so my PhD was in... Um, mechanotransduction in vascular cells. So I looked at how uh, the lining of uh, blood vessels sensed and responds to changes in blood flow and blood pressure. Um, and then in my first postdoc, um, I kind of shifted gears dramatically and studied glaucoma um, and basically how the cells in the eye are responsible for maintaining appropriate eye pressure. Um, and glaucoma is a case where you have kind of dysregulated uh, ocular pressure and it goes too high and it damages the ocular nerve. And then I kind of switched gears again <laughs> um, to go to my current postdoc, uh, which will hopefully be my last postdoc. Um, and I'm working in a developmental science lab right now. So we study how uh, tissue mechanics uh, and fluid forces uh, actually guide and shape developing organs uh, in an embryo. Um, so we do a lot of uh, work on mouse lung and mouse kidney, and we study how fluid that moves through the lung or the kidney um, early in development actually patterns uh, the tissue. So speaking of development, what does mentorship, the development of young minds, mean to you? Uh, so I've always viewed that as one of the most important things. Um, I like to think that I'm a helpful person, or I, I try to be a helpful person. Uh, so definitely part of it's just... I like uh, helping people out, um, and then uh, it makes me feel good about myself. <laughs> um, and then, if you uh, once you get into science, uh, especially academic science, um, it's an incredibly competitive environment. Um, there's uh, money issues; like you don't enter academics for uh, the money, and getting grant funding is always difficult. Um, so there's a lot of pressures on people. Um, especially uh, PhD students and then, uh, you know, postdocs and then even, you know, young faculty. Um, there's a lot of pressure on people and everybody ends up feeling it. So I think one of the most important things that uh, academics and, you know, scientists uh, can do for each other is just support each other. Um, and then I think if you're a little bit more senior, one of the key ways that you can support um, younger scientists and, you know, really encourage, is to encourage them to develop as scientists, to develop as people and be a support network for, for them when things get difficult. So, I mean, I've always viewed that as a really important part of being a scientist to kind of uh, enable the next generation of scientists. And it's something that um, <clears throat> I feel um, it's not the only reason I do it, but it's something that really pays dividends. Um, I found that uh, when I work with undergrads, when I really train them and help them to grow and develop as a scientist, uh, they work with me and they work for me and they help me produce better science. They are kind of a force multiplier. Um, and the same thing with graduate students. The more training you give somebody, uh, the more able they are to uh, help you out and further, you know, the common goals that we all have, which... Uh, in the big sense is, you know, doing science and understanding the world, and in the much smaller sense is getting, you know, papers out or grant applications out, things like that. And by mentoring people, you really enable them to uh, not only help themselves, but also, you know, they can give that back to you and also to other people as well. I went to a career uh, panel once, um, and I've been to many of these things, and they're like, oh, you need to make sure this is on your resume, you need to do that, this a bunch of like generic advice and why do I even go to these things? Um, but one of these panels, uh, the person had the most profound advice, which was be helpful because you never know when that's going to come back to you. And I thought, Hey, that's a really good idea. I should, you know, look at it as, you know, I'm helpful and maybe that'll come back to me. 
Uh, and that's actually how I got my first postdoc, and that's how I got my second postdoc. I've gotten multiple publications that way just by if somebody had a problem, I was, you know, said, sure, you know, let's figure out how to solve it. Um, and then, you know, it's come back to me. So not all the time, but a lot of the time it has. So I think being helpful is probably the best advice I can give anybody. So how did you become a mentor and how did you develop, cultivate that skill? So I, I've actually been really lucky. Um, I uh, learned it from, I managed to both my PhD advisor and then uh, my first postdoc advisor and then my current postdoc advisor um, have all been really good mentors to me um, in different ways. Um, and that's one of the things uh, that my PhD advisor really framed for me um, and tried to uh, encourage me is different people that you encounter can uh, mentor you in different ways. Um, and he really emphasized that uh, he was a mechanical engineer. Um, so he really knew mechanics well in some things. And he kind of did some stuff in biology. But when we started doing more and more biology, he really pushed me to find somebody who could mentor me scientifically uh, in more biological fields. Um, so he really drove home this point that, you know, a person can be really helpful in one way, but less helpful in another. And to be really successful, you want a mentoring team. You want a whole group of people that can help you. Um, and then I think um, both uh, from my PhD uh, and both of my postdocs, I think the thing that's uh, really been driven home to me is I get to see the people that I consider mentors, um, not only mentoring me, but mentoring the, uh, other, their other students and their other uh, trainees. Um, and that they do it uh, without, they don't do it grudgingly. They do it willingly and happily. Um, and they see that it benefits them, and that's not the only reason they do it, but, you know, um, it gives them personal satisfaction. It, you know, helps the field. It helps these uh, trainees grow. Um, so I think just being in an environment where I got to see that on a regular basis of these people taking their own time and effort and resources uh, to help those around them, I think really just showed me that uh, that's a really powerful thing to add to, uh, you know, your own life. Um, so. I learned by example, I think is the short answer. Obviously, you learned a lot from these examples. What are the hallmarks of a good mentor? What was something consistent that you saw in your mentors? I think um, the consistent thing is that uh, to be a good mentor, um, you A, have to recognize your own limits. Um, you're not good at everything. Um, and I mean that both in terms of scientific discipline and also just in uh, you know the different modes of support. Uh, some people can be very good at reaching out to somebody who's down and making them feel better, um, and that's a really important thing. Other people are less good at that, um, but more good at uh, problem solving and, you know, okay, so you have this problem, let's figure out how to fix it. Um, so you got to recognize your strengths as well as your weaknesses uh, so that you don't, so you can provide resources to people that, you know, they need when they need them. Um, the second thing is, um, whenever you're in a mentoring interaction, uh, you always should ask yourself, um, and I saw this with my mentors, uh, they would always ask themselves, uh, what would be best for me? Not for them or, you know, for who they wanted me to be, but what would be best for uh, me um, or any of their other trainees? And I think this is really important because um, a lot of us have a vision of ourselves or you know, what a good scientist is or what a good person is. Um, and we uh, structure, you know, our lives to kind of hit those goals. Uh, so some people really like academics. Some people think industry is important. Um, you know, everybody has a different perspective on life. Um, and if you want to mentor someone, you really have to understand what their perspective is or else you're going to find yourself just enforcing what you think they should be doing. Um, and really you should just be providing resources for them uh, so that they can reach their goals, not that their goals should um, reflect your goals, if that makes sense. So you're giving them the media, but you're not changing the expression of their genes. Exactly. <laughs> You've answered this in bits and pieces, but what's been the most rewarding aspect of being a mentor? I, I mean, you know, it probably sounds uh, trite, um, but one of the most rewarding things for me is... Um, and this is just a, I mean, just an example. Um, I walked into 
a cell culture room once, um, and I had, you know, my own stuff to do. And I saw somebody that I had mentored um, working with uh, their undergrad and doing it in a really, you know, profound, considerate, uh, you know, they were just being an excellent mentor. And for me, that was, that was success. Not that I'm a good mentor, but that somebody that I worked with is, I like to think, um, seeing my example and seeing how that's rewarding and applying that to their own life to be a better mentor to the people around them. And that was really, you know, one of the more profound moments of my life is seeing that passed on. Wow. That's excellent. Well, Josh, thank you for your time. All right. Well, thank you very much. So a big thanks to Josh for speaking with us today about mentorship. Um, and thank you for turning, tuning in and see you in the next episode of The Incubator.